Hey guys, thanks for coming back to Wooddale Library for another Halloween trick-or-treat floral class. Yay, it's Halloween again. It's coming up this weekend, so make sure you got your candy. We're going to have the flowers and you can set your pretty table for all the kids with the centerpiece we're going to make today. So as usual, I brought the little cute little container. You guys will see those when you get them. Uh, we have our wet foam in the liner, plastic liner. This is one third of the brick of foam. You know, I pre-soak that, let it sit in a sink of water, set, let it set down all by itself. You put the foam in, let it seep down all by itself, never forcing it because you will get a dry spot in the middle. Um, like I said, I have one third just kind of cut funny just to fit into this liner and it fits perfectly inside our container. So you're going to want to make sure you're adding water as you're, um, you know, just enjoy these flowers longer. And um, I would definitely take this thing out. Once you get the flower arrangement made, you can just pop it out. You'll be able to gra grab onto it. it out of the container, take it over to the faucet and make sure you always have some water in this container. Then the flowers will be um, fully hydrated for a lot longer. They'll live longer. So when I usually when you're cutting foam to any container, you like to have a bit of a lip just to kind of make it easier on you for arranging. Um, and then when you're working with the foam, again, just cut a piece to fit the, any container you're gonna use and just soak what you're gonna need. Because once you soak it, you're gonna wanna use it pretty quick in the next few days anyway. And you wanna keep that in water until you do use it. So it's ready to go, ready to be hydrated, ready to go. Um, so we're gonna be using, in your bouquet, you got their leather leaf, our usual greens. We have some sunflowers. Uh, we got some hypericum today, the little berries, and three carnations. I did have a few burgundy, but a lot of them are uh, this golem fuchsia color. We have our yellow solidago or um, yellow goldenrod, which you probably saw on the side of the road earlier this month. Uh, it's a wild flower. And then we got our pops. We got some butterscotch, daisies, or caramel, whatever you like better, caramel, butterscotch. And then some lime green anthos pops. These are both moms. So we're going to start with our greening of our container. And then, of course, everybody should get a little pumpkin of some sort, a little Halloween ditty stick in there. All right, we're going to start with this container and greening it up. So you got your leather leaf. And I always like to just pre cut all my greens. And if you're looking at this, you got a nice pointy tip here. We're going to start by making a nice tip. We got one of those. Always cutting right above another set of leaves. See how I just took that tip right out? So we got that. Now I'm gonna go down to this one and cut out these two together and use a double. And then I'll go a little further and get this one. And these are kind of big so I can actually use these separate. So I got quite a few leaves off of one stem of that leather leaf. So one more time, we'll do all of ours, cut them all up. And if you have anything that's broken, it looks like my tip here is a little bendy. It might be broken. You can just pinch that off. But here again, we're just going to go down to here, taking out that center pretty tip. We're going to take these two more together. Boink. We got a nice little stem. Nothing too long. An inch to two is a, two inches is probably the longest you want. So again, here, and then these are large. So it really depends on what size leaf you have, but again, if they're large, just use them alone separately. For this size arrangement, you don't need anything super big. So we're gonna cut, continue to cut these into smaller pieces. This one's gonna be a smaller piece. And these aren't as big on the bottom, so here again, I'm just gonna do a couple together. Just random pieces, nothing too crazy. Don't go too crazy thinking about it. So. Got a couple pieces like this and then if this one looks kind of funny i mean you can clean it up by taking off any broken little tips take out that stem that's sticking out and maybe you'll need it so don't throw it away yet so to begin we're going to do i'm going to take the tips we started with those pretty tips from the center of that leaf of the leather leaf here we go i got two of those like that so i'm going to stick these whoops right into the center. And as you see, I have some uh, waterproof tape just holding that foam into the container. So I'm just sticking these, each one, one on each side of the tape, just sort of folded back just a little bit. They're not straight up and down. They're kind of doing a little bit of angle. So that's our center. And then we'll continue by adding some. And if they're too long a stem, just, you know, cut off a little bit, nice clean cut on an angle. You're gonna need your pruners for this project. I 
if you don't have any, um, you could use a knife or even scissors if you have you no know, pruner. Um, but anyway, something about an inch stem is perfect. So we're going to do right on the edge, horizontally into the side of that foam. I'll do all four sides. And let's go again. I'm going to cut this a little shorter. I don't need long stems. You'll just run into each other inside that foam. So we're going to go one. And then if something's too big, like this is a little bit, you can just trim off the bottom leaves and give it a cut. If it's too long, we're going to do again horizontally right on the edge of the dish, all four sides. So no leaves, no jagged edges going into that foam. All right, here we go. We got the basics, the four sides, horizontal, flat on the edge of that dish because the arrangement's going to come around to the edge so we will not see the edge of that container. And then the two pieces up in front on top. So then we got all these random pieces left and let's just use them up. So here's my other one of those tips. I'm going to come off the side a little bit. Here's another one. I'm just going to take off a few of these bottom leaves. Here's a broken one. We'll just pinch him. Let's clip it. We're going to stick this on the other side. So you can see I'm starting to work off to the top and to the corners of that foam. And if this one's too big, I need a couple smaller ones. You can just break them down into smaller usable sizes. And remember, always coming down to the edge of the dish. And I just put that handle, you can either use it up or put it down. I'm just gonna leave it on the side here. It's not that tall, so I'll just squish. So the rest of those pieces, I'm just randomly sticking those in all around the side. It doesn't have to be perfect or even just natural kind of coverage of greens here. And let's just use every piece up just because we got here and we nice and full. We don't want to see the foam when we're done, but I do need to leave space for us to get those flowers in. So just a nice coverage with some foam showing you'll be fine. And I will use even this last piece. Why not? So you got a nice greened up container. You can see all sides. I worked as I'm working, I'm just turning it, getting it nice and full, just a good size. All right. So let's start with, let's start with these sunflowers. These are gonna probably be your most challenging flower, just because a lot of them do have bent necks. And you know, sunflowers, when they're growing, they trim towards the sun. But once they're cut, they kind of sit where they're at. So you know, you can choose through your, your selection here, and we're gonna to have to work with that stem. So you're gonna to have to use that curve to help you make this look right, okay? So this is probably the straightest of all my three. I'm gonna start with him. And we're gonna stick him right in the middle. Let's just do him right up top. Nice angle cut, clean angle cut. So it's supposed to give it a little bit more surface area, so it's gonna draw more water. If you don't get it, it's okay too. It'll still drink. So I'm gonna stick him right in the middle and I'm kind of making him so he's looking up straight, straight and tall. And now these two others, which do have the little curve, okay? I don't need them really tall. I'm gonna make this kind of a compact arrangement, not too loosey-goosey, but whatever you do, I'm sure it'll be beautiful. We're gonna do a side one. And so I'm using that curve to just kind of come off the side so it's looking to the side of the arrangement. And then we'll take the other one over here. Let's use him here and he'll do the same thing. A little lower down, but now they're looking out at whoever's sitting around the table. They're so happy. Okay, so then we're going to do those carnations. And like I said, when I'm cutting carnations, I don't cut right above a knob. Then I have this big fat knob going into the foam. So all greens are off. I usually cut above it or in between, depending on how long I want my stem to be. So we're going to continue with, we've got three of these. We're going to do them around the center flower so I'll go one and they're looking away from the center they're looking towards the edge of the container now here again I'm going to cut this edge and stick him on this side and if they're a little tight you can just sort of lock them a little bit okay so we got one two and I'm going to take that third one I'm cutting above that knob I can't give you an exact length because I think you got to use your own judgment on that one but it's kind of in between. They're all kind of nestled together. So you got, the, <clears throat> you got the gist of it here. You can see the pattern. Okay. Now we got two of these hypericums. And the hypericum, I prefer not to use the leaves on them. I don't know. It's just a thing. They're not the 
best leaves. If you want to leave them on, that's fine too. I really am all focused into this berry here, but not everybody pulls the foliage. But definitely pull anything that's going to get in your way here. So here again, we have two of these. So we're just going to stick these one on each side of that center so we can see those berries, okay? Because they're kind of fun. Little pumpkins. Little orangey pumpkins that aren't turning completely orange yet, but we're working on it. All right. So he's going to come in over here. That's still a little long. I'm going to cut that a little shorter again. Because it's in between. It's just kind of a filler of the berries, but it's kind of different texture. Makes it look cool. And let's see. And then we got that salad dago I gave you. And so the foliage is not that great at all. So we're going to definitely run our finger down that, strip that off. Any foliages, you can just peel that off. And this is a filler type flower too, because it's a bunch of little guys. And here we're just going to kind of go in between, stick one up on top. I think I'm going to go again and strip those leaves. That's why you get a green thumb using your pulling your leaves off. Yep. And we're just going to move those in around in between, kind of random. Once again, stripping as we go. Just some can go down lower. Oops, I want that a little shorter. Here we go. Down here. I got one more. Let's use him up. Pull that. Strip those leaves, which is kind of fun to do. Get up these ones too. They look a little bad. And I'm going to stick this last one down low over here. Yeah, you can come all the way down with this stuff too. Remember to come in on the sides as well. So we got the pretty basics in so far. But we still have a lot of flowers yet. So let's go with those butterscotch daisies, caramel daisies, whatever you want to call them. So these are pomps, as you know. These are mums, which are pomps. They have been pinched to create many little flowers. Um, so what we're going to do, just take your pruner and just cut them off, starting at the bottom of the main stem. And you can cut off individual flowers right at the stem, so you'll get the longest stem length possible and just work your way all the way up to up and one more, keep going. Now these are very generous with all the flowers, I have to say. You don't always get this many, this is a nice variety. So now I'm at the top, I have four that are about the same height, but their stems aren't even that much longer. Uh, I might just take one more because odd numbers work well together. And I could leave these three dies together and have one longer step if I need a taller one. Um, so it's just something to think about when you're making flower arrangements. So I could take these three and stick those right in underneath him. And then I can take any of these, they've all been freshly cut, so they're ready to go. So we're gonna take any tall ones towards the center, just under our big sunflower there. And then the little short ones we have, they work perfectly along the edge, right in there horizontally, okay? And here too, you may see a little curved stem, always having the curved stem looking away from the center at your people sitting down at the table there. You don't want them like looking in at some, you want to look out, okay? So here we go. I'm just gonna walk around this arrangement, sticking flowers in it, because they've all been cut. And so definitely get that edge as you turn and work. You can just, there's so many here. I'm gonna take a tall one up top. You're just basically gonna fill in all over with these now. Everywhere you see a spot, you can just go at it. And I still have another whole stem here, so you may have extra. So you can make another, ha, huh, maybe. So in between every flower, you're just gonna keep sticking a butterscotch. Little daisy there, there's another one. Okay, that was one stem, and I got all those flowers. That's pretty good. There's one more. Don't let him go. He's going to go right in here. So if you can't get your hand in, you can always separate your flowers a little bit, just so you don't break flowers as you're going. All right, so let's this out of the way a little bit. So that's one stem of those butterscotch. Um, I could use a couple more, but I don't even think I need all these. I'll just try for it. You can do as many as you like. Oops. So I'm just going to stick a few more in just so you can get the visual all the way. I mean, we got them in your bouquet, so you might as well use them up. 
Now, don't prune your own fingers as you're doing this. That does hurt. I almost did it today. Not looking where I'm pruning. Just don't go too fast. And there you go. So any knobs, I usually will trim those off so I have a cleaner stem. I kept these guys together because I'm running out of spots and I'm just going to take them together as a big clump. And then the rest of them are just going to fill in in between all the way to the edge. So you can see how full my arrangement comes down. Don't want any holes there, okay? All right, that's good. So lastly, we have the green anthos. And I just like that lime green. I think it really makes everybody else pop. So here again, we're going to pull these leaves. We don't need these, but I want the individual flowers. So I'm just going to cut them off. Again, starting at the bottom, working my way up to the top. So some of these, again, are too long. I might just leave a couple together on that main stem so I have a nice clean stem here and a longer stem. And I don't want this knob. I'm going to take that out. So here's my long one. He can come up top. Let's find a spot. Get in there. It's getting full here. So, But you can see how I'm in between with these green. And we'll do the rest with these short ones coming way down in between everybody. I do the anthos last because they tend to burst when you come back and to touch them. The little flowers just say that. You'll hit them and then they explode and all the petals fall off. So use them last, just that way you're not going to break them as you're using them. Okay, so here again, taking them off at the main stem, all the way up. So you can see these don't have as many flowers as those daisies, but the lime green is a nice accent for sure. All right, almost there. I just take those knobs off every time just because they're going to make a bigger hole in that foam. And it could be looser, you know, the less holes, the more uh, it's going to hold water, not dry out either. So we're just going to fill in with the rest of these. Boy, that green really sets everybody off. It's glowing. Day glow green. I love it. <laughs> okay, and it brings out the green in the center of the little daisy too because that's got a green eye in it. So there you go. That's a pretty little angel. Now you got your pumpkin or whatever you pick out of my bag of goodies there. You can stick him in here for a little embellishment like so. If you didn't get a stick on yours, because I know there's some pumpkins I have that have no sticks. They're just the styrofoam. Um, just take one of your stems from your Whatever you got, I just pulled this off that Saladago, I think. No, it's the Hypericum, either one. Just grab a stem and then just jam it into your styrofoam and stick them in, okay? And then of course you could add any little spiders, webbing, cute things if you want, but it looks cute just like this, perfect. And like I said, when it's time to water it, you can just lift it out of the pot like this, gently. And you can see there's a little bit of water now since we've been pushing into that foam, but I would ideally want that foam always drawing some water. So you want to have at least halfway, okay? But uh, if you try to do it on the table, you're in a mess. It'll be everywhere. That'll be a very scary mess to clean up. Ha. Okay, you guys. <laughs> have a happy Halloween. You could always stick a little candy in there. Surprise. The Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Okay, you guys. Have a happy Halloween. Great to see you again. And we'll see you uh, Thanksgiving, I think. All right, looking forward to it. Have a great weekend. Thanks again. Bye.